오늘 영상을 먹고 나면 다시 할게요 여러분들이 어떤 다이어트 전문가나 비만 전문가 또는 당뇨 전문가가 제대로 된 사람인지 아닌지 쉽게 구분하는 방법이 하나 있습니다 그건 바로 지방간 그리고 인슐린의 관계에 대해서 이해하고 있는지 확인하는 겁니다 예전 영상에서 소개했던 제이슨 펑과 마찬가지로 로버트 러스티그도 지방간을 제대로 보는 게 얼마나 중요한지 이야기합니다. So, this is what you learned in med school. You get fat. The fat cell is the problem. You get fat and because you get fat, the fat drives cytokines, TNF-alpha, IL-6, which go via the portal vein to the liver. The liver responds to those by becoming insulin resistant, increasing hepatic glucose output, HGO, which thereby increases blood sugar, which thereby causes the islet cells to have to make more insulin, which then drives more energy into fat. And so you end up with this vicious cycle, but it starts with the fat. It's the adipocentric view of metabolic syndrome. And then the muscles along for the ride. This is what they teach in medical school. 여기 보이는 그림이 의사들이 학교에서 배웠을 인슐린 저항성의 전통적인 모델이라고 합니다. 지방 세포를 중심에 두고 대사 증후군을 바라보는 건데 문제의 시작이 몸의 체지방이 과다 축적된 상황으로 보는 거예요. 몸에 지방이 많으니까 간에 문제가 생기고 이런저런 문제가 생겨서 질병이 발생한다는 거예요. 이런 관점을 가진 사람들은 비만이 대사 증후군의 원인이다 라는 주장을 합니다. 그런데 이런 관점이 문제가 있다고 지적합니다. The question is, is it true? Yes or no? We'll talk about it. So, what I'm going to say to you is, it is true for about 10% of the population. For about 50% of the population, there's a different explanation. which has been buried. And I'm going to explain that one to you a little bit differently. It starts with the liver, not with the fat. Okay, because the liver gets insulin resistant. And how? So on the left, we have normal liver, sinusoids, myel, canaliculi, Kupfer cells, all good. And on the right, we have fatty liver disease. And you can see the fat vacuoles, you can see the macrophages, you can see the beginning of scarring and fibrosis. The question is, what caused it? Prior to 1980, if you saw this under the microscope, bingo, it's alcohol. But now, five-year-olds get this, and they don't drink alcohol. Turns out, sugar does the exact same thing. And the reason is because sugar and alcohol are handled by the liver virtually identically. That's why kids are getting the diseases of alcohol without alcohol. Because fructose and ethanol are handled by the liver virtually identically. 술이든 설탕이든 우리가 입을 통해서 넣었을 때 간으로 가서 간에 부하를 주고 문제를 만들기 때문입니다. This guy is thin, but he's got the same diseases as the guy in the center. Thin sick, fat sick, fat healthy. So you cannot tell from the outside what's going on on the inside. Because it's the fat you can't see that makes the difference. And the fat you can't see is in your liver. And how did it get there? That's the point. And it didn't get there from the grass-fed beef. But it could have gotten there from the corn-fed beef. But it most assuredly got there from the sugar. NAFLD is the liver manifestation of metabolic syndrome, and it correlates with all the other manifestations of metabolic syndrome. So large waste, high glucose, low HDL, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, all the things you've heard about, in both adults on top and in children on the bottom. Fatty liver disease is liver metabolic syndrome. 모든 지방이 똑같이 문제가 되는 게 아니라는 겁니다. 특히 대사 문제와 관련해서 직접적인 연관성을 가진 지방은 그 중에서도 간에 낀 지방이라는 겁니다. Now, this is probably the other most important slide I'm going to show you. So the question is, which fat causes the disease? We all assumed it was just how fat you were. No. 
Then we assumed, okay, it's all the belly fat, the visceral fat. This was the first study that said, no, it's the liver fat. So this was work from Sam Klein's group at uh, Wash U St. Louis. And what they did was they, when they had finally got a three Tesla scanner, because you need a big scanner to be able to look at liver fat, and it took a while. Um, what they did was they put a whole bunch of fat people in a scanner, and they measured visceral fat versus liver fat. And what they showed in this study was that when they held the liver fat constant, the visceral fat explained none of the effect on insulin uh, resistance, whereas when they held the visceral fat constant, the liver fat explained all of the difference in insulin resistance. It's the liver fat that makes the difference, not the visceral, not the subcutaneous. It's the liver fat. And 45% of adults in the United States now have fatty liver disease. You wanna talk about epidemics? That's the epidemic. Okay, I guarantee you coronavirus will not reach 45%. Now the question is, where'd that fat come from, that liver fat? And that's in the right picture. And you'll notice in the gray, non-systemic fatty acids. Where do those come from? The fat made right in the liver through a process called de novo lipogenesis, DNL, new fat making. This is what your liver does to sugar to get it out of the liver. It turns it into fat and then exports it out in VLDL, which we measure in the serum triglyceride. 이 내용 굉장히 중요합니다. 설탕을 많이 먹으면 간에서 지방이 만들어지는데 그게 간을 끼기도 하지만 많은 것들이 간 밖으로 그러니까 혈액 속으로 흘러나옵니다. 그래서 설탕, 술 또는 탄수화물을 과다하게 섭취하시는 분들의 경우 피 검사를 했을 때 중성지방 수치가 높게 나오는 거예요. 전통적 전문가들이 LDL이 문제다, VLDL이 문제다 라고 말하는 건 많이 봤을 거예요. 그런데 현대에 들어서 진짜 문제의 본질은 그 LDL, 그 VLDL이 어떻게 만들어졌냐는 거예요. 다시 한번 더 설탕, 술, 그리고 과다한 탄수화물 섭취입니다. 이어서 러스티그는 포도당과 과당의 대사 방식을 설명하면서 왜이 중에서 과당이 특히 문제가 되는지 설명합니다. 이 내용은 조금 복잡해 보일 수도 있는데요. 관심 있으신 분들은 보셔도 괜찮고 좀 어려우신 분들은 여기만 살짝 넘겨주세요. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
We gave them processed food. We gave them kid food. We gave them food kids would eat. We bought it at Safeway. Okay? But it was no added sugar food. It was high starch, low sugar food. And we gave them a scale. And every day, we'd call them up on the phone, say, what'd you weigh? And if they were losing weight, eat more! In order to keep them weight constant over the course of the 10 days. And then we studied them again. All of their labs got better. Their fasting glucose went down five points. Their blood pressure went down five points. Their fasting lactate, and that's really important. They had a lactate level at baseline. You're not supposed to have a lactate level at baseline. If you have a lactate level, where's Mark? If you have a lactate level at baseline, that means you're either post-exercise, or you have cancer, or you have a mitochondrial encephalomyopathy. These kids had a lactate level, and it went down just by switching starch for sugar. Their fasting insulin went down 25%. Their glucose area into the curve went down 8%. Their insulin area into the curve went down 25%. Their triglycerides went down 46%. Every aspect of their metabolic health improved with no change in calories and no change in weight. We reversed their metabolic syndrome, and I will show it to you. So we wanted to see whether or not their liver was turning that sugar into fat. And here's what their de novo lipogenesis did. It got cut in half. So they're making less fat in their liver, even though they're getting just as many calories and more glucose. Now, what happened to their fat stores? Now, remember, they didn't lose weight, kept the same weight. So their subcutaneous fat did not change at all. But take a look at their visceral fat, went down 7%. But take a look at their liver fat, went down 22%. 22% with no change in calories and no change in weight. And as it turns out, their change in liver fat predicted their change in insulin sensitivity. And now we actually have data that showed that they had non-alcoholic fatty pancreas disease too. And that got better when we took the sugar out of their diet. So in cartoon form, fatty liver with lots of triglyceride, lots of VLDL, lots of liver fat, Nine days of isocaloric fructose restriction, the liver fat went down, the de novo lipogenesis went down, the VLDL went down, and the insulin sensitivity and insulin secretion improved. In other words, we reversed their metabolic syndrome with no change in calories, no change in weight, QED, proof positive, F you. <laughs> so, we think that the adipocentric version of metabolic syndrome is actually the problem. It can happen, yes, but you have to get really fat to have that happen. What more likely happens is your liver gets insulin resistant because of the sugar bolus that now all of us are exposed to from processed food, which drives fatty liver, which then drives hepatic glucose output, which then drives the beta cell to make extra insulin, which then drives increased adipogenesis at the level of the fat cell. This is the hepatocentric view of metabolic syndrome. And then the muscles along for the ride. 여기까지 보신 분들은 이제 저와 조금 더 비슷한 느낌으로 세상을 보게 되는 겁니다. 핵심 요약해 드리겠습니다. 설탕은 비만과 당뇨를 유발한다. 그 이유는 칼로리가 높아서가 아니라 설탕은 독이기 때문이다. 설탕은 간을 망가뜨리고 지방으로 바뀌어서 간을 끼기도 하고 밖으로 넘쳐 흐른다. 중성 지방의 형태로. 이 과정에서 인슐린 저항성이 증가하며 인슐린 저항성은 다양한 대사 질환들의 중심에 있다. 비만, 몸의 체지방이 많은 현상, 당뇨, 몸 안에 있는 탄수화물이 제대로 처리되지 못하는 현상. 이것들은 대사가 망가지고 있는 문제 상황의 증상에 불과하다. 문제의 진짜 본질은 간의 인슐린 저항성이다. 지금부터 비만과 다이어트를 얘기할 때이 내용을 꼭 머릿속에 넣고 가시길 바라겠습니다. 오늘 내용이 도움이 되었다면 구독과 좋아요 그리고 알람 설정 부탁드리겠습니다. 다이어트계의 마이클 조던이 되고 싶은 남자 최겸했습니다.